So good morning, I hope that um, you've managed to find us this morning. Uh, we're streaming live from the St Nicholas Facebook page and we're trying something a little bit different this morning. We've been doing various things with you online. We've been doing our Compline in the evenings and we've been streaming some of our Sunday services. This is a much more relaxed space, we hope. Um, you'll see that Sky and I have got our cups of coffee with us, so um, if you'd like to have a coffee as you're um, watching us and uh, that, that would be great. What we're going to do is we're going to use um, a, a book of prayers and scripture readings called Celtic Treasure which is by J. Philip Newell. Um, then we're also going to have a couple of Bible readings and I'm going to give a short reflection on our Bible readings. So you don't need to have the words with you, you can just listen to us and join in as you like and as I say you enjoy a cup of tea. So we're actually using day one in the book but not all the, the, the scripture readings as um, we have slightly different scripture readings but this is where you might want to have a, um, a candle with you as well because you start by lighting a candle. So we will as well. We light a light in the name of God who creates life, in the name of the Saviour who loves life, in the name of the Spirit who is the fire of life. Be still and aware of God's presence within and all around. Amen. the first one. So our first Bible reading is taken from Paul's letter to Titus, um, chapter 3, Good. and Sky will read it for us. Maintain good deeds. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarrelling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Our second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and starting at verse 11, if you'd like to follow along. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Yeah, 
What's the difference? Incidentally, this isn't a joke, so don't hold your breath waiting for a punchline. What's the difference between the behaviour of a morally up upright person and the behaviour of a Christian? In his letter to Titus, Paul's instruction regarding behaviour is this. Be subject to rulers and authorities. Be obedient, ready for good work. Speak evil of no one. Avoid quarrelling. Be gentle and show courtesy to everyone. Good instructions. But they seem to be ones that could be followed whether or not a person has faith in God. So the question remains, what's the difference between a morally upright person and a Christian in terms of their behaviour? Now I want you to hold that question in your minds for a moment and we're going to look at Luke's Gospel and leprosy. Now the law, as it's found in the Hebrew Scriptures, has quite a lot to say about leprosy or about the, a number of different skin conditions that are classified together as leprosy in our English translation. So the first one is at the onset of a skin conditioner, skin condition, the sufferer had to be examined by a priest and then the priest would declare that person either clean or unclean. So in the case of the lepers that we see described in Luke's Gospel, this must already have happened because their illness is named in the text as leprosy, so they've already been to see the priest. All ten men then have made themselves subject to rulers and authorities. And if that phrase sounds familiar, it's because I've taken it from Paul's letter to Titus. So their moral behaviour up to that point is unimpeachable. As they've been diagnosed as lepers, they must also have been declared unclean. And so we see a further instance of their ethical rectitude in the phrase, keeping their distance, they called out. Two more of Paul's rules in the letter to Titus ticked off because here we see obedience, they're obeying the purity laws, and we also see showing courtesy to their fellow men, their fellow men being Jesus and the people gathered around him. And both of these qualities are qualities that Paul mentions to Titus. So we can uh, assume then that the lepers are good, upstanding members of society, albeit unclean ones. Um, and when they cry out to Jesus, have mercy on us, they're made clean. Note the use of the expression that Luke uses. He uses the expression made clean rather than healed. However, this is the point at which the good moral behaviour of all ten lepers is revealed for what it truly is. Because only one of the lepers responds to his new status of cleanliness by giving thanks to God. Up until this point, the behaviour of all ten men has been indistinguishable. But now, we see the difference that faith makes. The leper falls on his face and he gives thanks to God. Sky and I were recently in discussion with some Christian friends of ours in Croatia and they were telling us about how they'd contracted coronavirus and recovered from it. Like the leper, our friend's response to this recovery was to praise God. And I was struck as they were telling us the story of the example of their faith in this. It's very easy to say, isn't it? Well, of course we got better. Most people do. That's not what our friends did. They praised God. That's the difference that their faith made. Giving God the credit for the good things in our lives is what separates us as Christians from the merely morally upright. Our faith causes us to give praise. And this is actually the thing that Luke's Gospel tells us heals us. You remember I said that Luke used the phrase made clean rather than healed. Jesus said to the leper, the one who had already been made ceremonially clean, the one whose skin condition had already cleared up. 
This is what Jesus says. Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. All ten lepers were made clean. Only one of them had the faith to be healed. So let us pray. In the silence of our hearts, or in spoken words, let us give thanks for the gift of this day and pray for the life of the world. So the response is, we pray to you, O Lord, that this day may be holy, good and joyful. We, we pray, pray to you, you O Lord, Lord, that we may offer to you our worship and our work. We, we pray, pray to, to you, you, O Lord, that we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We, we pray, pray to you, you O Lord, Lord, that in the pleasures and pains of life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We, we pray, pray to you, you O Lord, Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, in trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray, we pray to, to you, you, O Lord. We commend ourselves and for all whom we pray, to the mercy and protection of God. O God of life, of light, for whom all life flows, may we glimpse the shinings of your presence in all things, in the darknesses of our world, in places of fear and terrible wrong, and in the darkness of our own lives, in times of confusion and doubt, may we glimpse the shinings of your life-giving presence. Amen. Amen. So just before I say the closing words, just to so thank you for being here with us and um, we will try this out for four weeks during lockdown and pray that this will be a space for you to just give you a bit of encouragement and hope in these coming weeks. So in the closing words we blow out our candle but that light continues to go with us into the day. So the blessings of heaven the blessings of earth, the blessings of sea and of sky, on those we love this day, and on every human family. The gifts of heaven, the gifts of earth, the gifts of sky and of sea, be with you.